You've been forced into another high school death game and all of your classmates are dying again. You're the only one that knows what's about to happen and you'll need to use your knowledge to escape certain death. When the death game keeps repeating itself until you die, what do you do? I'm going to break down the mistakes made, what you should do, and how to beat King's Game Part 2. The ultimate nightmare has returned. Nobu here has just started his first day at a new high school. His memories of the deadly King's game he played in his previous school haunt him, and he's become a social recluse. He's assigned a seat right next to the most popular girl in class, Natsuko, and out of coincidence, she happens to share the same last name as his girlfriend who died in the previous game. By the end of the day, Nobu begins to line up and starts to forget about all the horrible stuff he experienced in the last King's game. But his peace of mind doesn't last too long. That night, Nobu here gets a text on his phone while in bed. A message informs him that he and the rest of his new classmates have been entered into the King's game. All orders must be obeyed in 24 hours, and quitting the game is not an option. The first order by the King is for Nobu here and the girl he met earlier, Natsuko, to kiss before midnight of the next day. The death game has begun. Okay, if I'm Nobu, I would be freaking the hell out. I've already been through one King's game before and watched all of my friends brutally die. Not only that, I've witnessed my girlfriend sacrifice herself for my safety, leaving me an emotional wreck. <laughs> Luckily for me, I know what's coming next is deadly, which means we need to take action now to save my own life. My first priority would be to convince the rest of my class that this game is not a prank and I'm not just some creepy guy who wants to make out with hot chicks. Dork! Now, it would make sense here to consider for a moment not to tell anyone at all about the King's game being real. That way, more students will be likely to die quickly from not following the orders early on, and I'd have less competition. But unfortunately, the first order of the game was given to us, which means we can't use this strategy. As soon as we obey, the king will let everyone else know that we follow the order. The better thing to do here is to tell everyone about the king's game and complete our order, but then at the same time, keep some of the details a secret so that I could use those later to my advantage, and proving that this game is real can be done very easily. At Nobu's previous school, 31 students brutally died throughout the course of a few days, and he was the only survivor. I'm sure there would have been widespread national coverage of these deaths and multiple police investigations, while the police and media might have hid his identity for privacy reasons. Since he's a minor, he still has plenty of provable evidence that he was involved. If it were me, all I need to do is show my new classmates photos of me and my friends in my former classroom, and the media coverage of these incidents happening, and they'd probably be scared enough to believe me. If that doesn't work, why not just get out my phone? Assuming I haven't got a new phone, I can just show them texts of the previous game and all the crazy punishments dished out to my old classmates. The next day, all of the classmates gather around to discuss the text they've received. Most of them think it's some silly way for Nobu here to get in on his crush and who can blame them. Nobu knows that he's in store for another death game and he can't handle the thought of playing through it again, so he volunteers to be the first victim and is willing to die and take Natsuko down with him in the process. He goes to the school's baseball field to wait out the punishment for failing his order. But luckily for him, Natsuko happens to find him and they share a kiss. When the clock hits midnight, they receive a text with two words, obedience confirmed. Looks like they made it just in the nick of time. Now that the first order is complete, it's time for the real games to begin. A dozen orders are sent to different members of the class, ranging from licking feet to straight up killing fellow classmates. Not only that, two rules are set for the next 24 hours which can't be broken. No one can do anything the king considers forbidden, and no one in the class is allowed to fall asleep. Sadly, for two early sleepers, their lives have just been brutally ended. This game is no joke. More texts start coming in and people are dropping like flies. Nobu here runs off to the closest classmate's house. Rushing in, he realizes it's too late. The king's game has begun its death spree. But the king's game is not for the weak-hearted. Nobu gets a text saying that the six other students have all been given savage punishments, each dying in their own gruesome ways. This is terrifying, but we have knowledge and knowledge is power in a situation like this. We already know from the first game that the king is not a person in our class, nor is the king a person at all. If I'm Nobu, I'm remembering what the white-haired girl here told us back in the first game. Based on her research, she found that the king is a virus that has the power to hypnotize people into doing crazy shit that will kill you. 
She's also told us that the virus has the ability to evolve and become more contagious over time. Look, if I'm just a high school student and I want to survive this deadly game from repeating over and over, I'm gonna need some help from adult professionals. That means the police and expert computer scientists. The first thing I would do is to contact the nearby police station and get immediate assistance. I would create a fake email address posing as a serial killer who's threatening to kill me. I would set emails from that account to deliver at certain times over the course of a week to make sure my fake killer is as convincing as possible. With these threats, I could request the police to give our class 24-7 surveillance. If they witness the punishments, they have much more resources they can use to stop the virus and 24-7 surveillance might be enough to stop us from doing anything dangerous to ourselves if we were to fail in order. With Japan having one of the lowest murder rates in the world and 9 students already dead, this would easily be one of the biggest murder cases to ever come out of the country. The only one greater murder case in recent memory would be the first Kings game that we just went through. Since I'm the only survivor from the first Kings game, I should definitely be a person of interest in this case and could easily get the attention of the media or police if I had to. As far as I know, telling outsiders about the game isn't breaking the rules. I could use the media as a platform to let people know that the King is not a person, but in fact a virus, and call on scientists to handle the rest. Gathering the survivors to the park, Nobu finally reveals to the class that this is not his first rodeo. Nobu has been involved with the King's game once before and was the only survivor after winning the game. He explains to them that disobeying the rules can mean death and they start to panic. But their panic turns to anger when they find out that Nobu didn't want to kiss Natsuko, meaning they both would have failed their orders and died after the clock hit midnight. Out of rage, this blonde guy here attacks Nobu before receiving a gruesome punishment. Suddenly, the blonde guy's body implodes with dozens of bloody holes, his eyes popping out of his face, falling to the ground dead. It turns out that attacking other classmates was what the king deemed forbidden. Natsuko reveals that her next order is to have sex with this spiky-haired student. Knowing she will die if she doesn't follow the order, she cries in Nobu's arms and asks for him to help. Nobu tries to comfort her, but when she asks him if there's a way to escape, all he can say is that she must follow the order. Hearing this, Natsuko suddenly pulls a complete 180. Getting a crazed look in her eye, she kicks down the spiky-haired guy, gets rid of her shirt, and insists they do it right here in front of everyone, and that she'll do whatever it takes to win, and that Nobu is useless to her if he doesn't know a way to escape the game. But then pulling another switch, just before she completes the order, she takes Nobu away for a talk in private, and this idiot goes with her. Being the good guy that he is and not realizing what he's getting himself into, Nobu here tries to tell her that they need to work together, but she doesn't agree. She says that the game has only one winner and is survival of the fittest. Her attitude towards the situation gives him a hint that she might have been a part of a previous King's game. Out of nowhere, she screams out for help as if Nobu is coming onto her. The classmates arrive and beat him down. Noticing that Nobu here is in trouble, this sporty guy here takes him away, along with this blue-haired girl. The sporty guy here reveals that he has received an order to become the king for one order. So he sends a text to himself, ordering to protect the blue-haired girl from harm to make her feel safe. Okay, with one third of our class dead, emotions are running hot. In high pressure situations, it's common for people to lose their ability to think clearly and Natsuko here is taking full advantage of that. This girl just pulled a complete 180 on Nobu here twice and still fooled everyone into thinking he's a creep. She'll do whatever it takes to survive and right now she's playing everyone like a fiddle. If I'm Nobu here, this girl just became my number one opponent. He's too busy trying to be kind and helpful when he should know better than anyone else that there can only be one winner in this game and it nearly cost him his life. But the situation is actually much worse than that. Not only is Natsuko willing to win at all costs, she sees Nobu as a major threat. As he was being beaten up, she tried to manipulate this blue-haired girl who was given the power by the king for a day to kill two students by sending them a text with the word die. Natsuko legit told the blue-haired girl to kill Nobu on the spot, and if not for the sheer luck of the sporty guy intervening at the last moment and the blue-haired girl realizing what she's about to do and breaking her own phone, Nobu would be dead. If it were me, 
This sporty guy's order is my ticket to eliminating Natsuko before she gets a chance to pull any other stunts. I would type an order into his phone for the entire class while he's too distracted from carrying me. It would say every student except Nobu must immediately die. I would then tell him he dropped his phone and hand it back to him, pushing the send button with his thumb to send the kill order to every student, including him. There can only be one winner, and I'm not taking any chances with keeping this level of competition within the game. The sooner Nobu realizes Natsuko and everyone else are a threat that he has no choice but to deal with, the better. After they escape, Nobu here explains the situation they're in and where the king's game originated from. A place called Yanaki Village was the birthplace of the game. The three decide to go to the village to find clues on how to beat the game. On the way, Mizuki replaces her broken phone and the group travels by train to Yanaki Village. At Yanaki Village, Nobu finds a picture of his dead girlfriend from the first game and her father in one of the houses. Exiting the place, he finds a dead body with another picture beside it. This time, it's the father holding two babies, finding two names on the back of the picture. He finds that Natsuko and his dead girlfriend were sisters and the dead body he found is their father. So that's why they both had the same last name. This information lets him confirm that Natsuko is in fact also a King's Game survivor. He also finds out that their father was in the first ever King's Game. Meanwhile, texts are sent out showing that seven more students have been brutally murdered by the king. In a matter of three days, half the class has been wiped out. Since the village is pretty remote, the blue-haired girl and the sporty guy go to the nearest radio tower to get a phone signal in order to complete their orders. When they reach the tower, the sporty guy knocks her out and sends the text with the word die to himself and Natsuko from her new phone. Not knowing that the text must be sent from the original phone, the blue-haired girl is sentenced to death for disobedience obedience, while the sporty guy here is sentenced to death for failing to protect her. While all this craziness is going on, classmates continue to die. This girl here has been given an order to be groped by another classmate, but he's already dead. Another girl has been ordered to lose something important, as she brutally murders her parents and is about to do the unthinkable, but gives up, leading to her death. With both of his friends dead, Nobu tries calling his spiky-haired classmate for help, but Natsuko picks up the phone and tells him that she has taken both the phone and the spiky-haired boy hostage in order to complete her order and for her own amusement. She mocks him for trying to kill her from the wrong phone and informs him that she is even holding his own phone too. Without their phones, Nobu and the spiky-haired guy can't play and are sure to die. Desperate, Nobu tries looking for clues and that's when he remembers that players of this game and the previous one were given the mysterious single syllable text that may lead to some answers. Natsuko takes the chance to gather everyone at a park where they discuss the next order that they just received, and it's to play a brutal game. In the order of their classroom seat numbers, they must take turns breaking their own fingers. In each turn, any student may break as many of their own fingers as they wish. Breaking a right hand finger is worth one positive point that you can assign to anyone, and breaking a left hand finger is worth one negative point that you can assign to anyone. Whoever has a negative point total at the end of the game will be punished, and if they want, players have the ability to pass on their turn. The game ends after each player has taken one turn. So we now know for sure that Natsuko has been in a previous game, just like Nobu here. This means she's dangerous, because you don't beat the king's game without going through some heavy mental trauma, and we need to be treating her as a very serious threat, and take action to eliminate her as soon as possible. Before the game starts, I would tell everyone about all the crazy information I've I've just gathered on my little trip to Yonaki Village. I tell them this to convince them that at this point, we all need to be working together to take Natsuko down. She's a complete liability to the rest of us and we know she's prepared to do the most savage things to win this game. And we know that her father was in the original game. She herself has been in two games and her sister was in the previous game. It's like a little King's Game family reunion where none of the family members come back alive. Looking at this game, there's a lot of strategy involved, but it can be boiled down to a few simple concepts. First, the last player to go holds the most power, because after their turn, the game ends, so no one can undo their moves, and anyone with negative points immediately dies. Secondly, collaboration gives you a lot of power. For example, in four players against three players, the four players can give 20 negative points by breaking all of their left hand fingers. This will give each of the three opponents six or seven negative points, which means even all five of their right hand fingers won't be enough to save themselves. But the most important thing 
thing to understand about this game is that even using these strategies to gain an advantage, it's almost impossible to prevent someone from taking revenge once you've doomed them to die, if they still have a turn left. If, however, you team up against two players, they might not be able to save themselves, but they can both work together to kill one of your teammates. Which is exactly why I wouldn't play this game by the rules at all. Because we need to think outside of the box here. Instead of playing this game, I would get all of my classmates together and pin Natsuko down to the ground. By now, the death game rules against violence being forbidden for 24 hours is already over, and we can convince the remaining players that she's been evil the whole way through and that she doesn't deserve any more chances. And even if she has one or two friends that are on her side, the rest of the class will be too much for them to fight off. They start playing and most of the students team up and agree to pass their turn, including Nobu here, after his friend asks him to trust them. That's when this spiky haired guy who was taken hostage and his phone taken by Natsuko decides to break one of his positive fingers and all five of his negative fingers. He then threatens to use all of his negative points on Natsuko unless he gets his phone back from her. She then gives the phone back and he ends up giving one positive point to our guy Nobu, four negative points to Natsuko, and one negative point to Natsuko's best friend. With everyone else passing and the last player looking hesitant, it looks like this leaves Natsuko and her best friend as the loser of the game. But Natsuko has one last trick up her sleeve. The last person to go is Natsuko's best friend, who is reluctant to break her fingers. Before she can make a decision, Natsuko does it for her and smashes four of the fingers on her positive hand. Somehow, she she also manages to convince the best friend to give her four positive points, which means she's now safe. But she's not done, as Natsuko kindly breaks her best friend's remaining positive finger and saves the best friend from ending the game with a negative point total. No one ends up with a negative point total and the order is complete. Okay, I think it's pretty obvious here that Natsuko's best friend is suffering from a severe case of Stockholm Syndrome, which is a psychological response that happens when victims of abuse develop a bond with their abuser, which is more common than you think. Either way, Natsuko's friend can't be trusted to work with the rest of the team. Now we don't have time to reason with her friend, and it looks like her and Natsuko have been friends for years now, and none of us have the psychiatric experience to stop her from going to the dark side. But Natsuko here made a critical mistake. When her turn came to break her own fingers, she passed, thinking she was safe to use her friend to get back the points. As soon as her turn was over, all it would take is two more broken left fingers to give Natsuko negative six points, and then there would be nothing her friend could have done to save her, with only five fingers on her right hand. There's no time limit on this game, so if it came down to just me and Natsuko's friend remaining, I would get some ice, pain meds, and a hammer and do what's necessary to ensure the game gives her a painful death. The class gathers again near the river. Except for Natsuko, they all agree to work as a group to beat the king's game. Suddenly, our spiky-haired friend here begins bleeding from all over. To the surprise of no one, Natsuko has struck again. Before giving the phone back, she goes into Spiky Haired Guy's phone and blocks the king. Blocking the king on your phone is the same as quitting the game, and the rule set from the start is broken. No quitting allowed. His head explodes off of his body, killing him. This short kid comes running back with a present for the guy, but it's too late. And in a state of shock, he tries putting the hat he bought onto the Spiky Haired Guy's headless body. The next order is given. Without being allowed to use any vehicles, the class must run to the the top of the nearest mountain. Every time eight hours pass, the furthest member from the top will die until everyone reaches the finish line. Nobu takes along Riona and this headband guy here. The three run to the top, but after a few hours, Nobu's classmates begin to fade. Realizing he's not fit enough to make it, headband guy jumps into the ocean as Nobu tries, but ultimately fails to save him as he disappears into the ocean. I guess that means he wanted to drown in his sorrows. Later on, Nobu figures out that he and Riona are in last place. Before another eight hour window passes, Nobu purposefully keeps himself in last place on purpose so the girl can survive. But in a strange series of events, the guy that fell in the ocean and drowned earlier ends up receiving the punishment. Being very unfit, Nobu and Riona are once again minutes away from death. They're way too far behind to catch up and one of them will die as another eight hours pass. But luckily for them, Natsuko's friend here ran the opposite direction, meaning when the eight hour window finally passes again, she takes the punishment as her head flies off of her body. Body. Eventually, Natsuko is the first to reach the top of the mountain. As typical for her, she manages to trick three of the classmates into suffering brutal deaths. Shortly after, Nobu arrives with Riona along with the short kid and glasses girl, as only five students manage to complete the order. When they reach the top, they receive a new
new order, cut off parts of their body to make a human doll. The body parts can be given from one person or multiple people. The short kid here has a psychotic break and knocks out Nobu with a rock to the head. He offers his own limbs up to complete the order. Natsuko then obliges and cuts his leg off with a chainsaw. Seeing this, Glass's girl attacks her, but is sliced straight in the chest and bleeds out. Okay, out of all the orders we've gotten, this is the craziest one so far. At this point, the best way to survive the King's game is to stop playing altogether and treat this like the battle royale it always was. Firstly, I would be way more on edge around the short kid. He seems like a nice person, but he just watched his best friend's head explode off of his body yesterday. He's probably not in the most mentally stable condition at the moment and should be watched at all costs. Tensions are high right now, and these are my classmates, but I've only known them for about a week. This might sound cold-blooded, but there's a big fat chainsaw right there. We're on top of a mountain where no CCTV footage would catch us. I would grab the chainsaw and pretend to take the bullet for the group. When they let their guard down, I would slice nuts Suko in half like a gorgeous ham slice. I'm sure the rest wouldn't mind, but I'm not stopping there. In the midst of celebrating Natsuko's death, I would take out the others and go on my very merry way. Apart from Natsuko, I'm the most knowledgeable person when it comes to the King's game. By winning the game, I could use my past experiences to tell top scientists, researchers, and whoever else about the dangers of this virus and how fast it can evolve. Based on the events in Yonaki Village, we know that the game can be hosted in places other than a classroom. If the game continues to spread, it might wipe out entire countries in the years to come. So if you think about it, I'm really killing my classmates here for the greater good. After seeing the chaos they've caused, the remaining three stop fighting and decide to get to the bottom of this game. They remember that everyone who dies while playing the game gets a single syllable text sent to them before they're punished. By combining the syllables, they find a message that says, end the game by ending your life. Even if one survives, the king's game won't end until humanity is destroyed. The king virus sure has a dark sense of humor. Realizing that the game will never be beaten, Natsuko here attacks the main character. Suddenly, she gets a chainsaw to the spine from Riona and the madness looks to be all over. Riona then has a romantic moment and confesses her love to Nobu here before being rudely interrupted with a chainsaw through the throat as Natsuko briefly comes back from the dead. Both of them fall to the ground while bleeding out. Speaking her final words, Natsuko admits that she's also in love with Nobu because of how similar he was to her old boyfriend. However, in a matter of seconds, they both die due to blood loss. Nobu arrives in the afterlife, where he reunites with his girlfriend who died in the previous game. The rest of his fallen classmates look on at him before Natsuko appears again, this time looking to be at peace with herself, and the group wanders off into the horizon. Only one person remains. Riona here takes the dead body of the main character to the beach as they share a final romantic moment together. She kisses him and finds that his body has gone completely cold. Realizing that there's nothing left for her, she carries his lifeless body into the ocean before disappearing. It looks like she chose not to continue. Sometime in the future, life has gone back to normal. Before long, a brown-haired student receives a text from a mysterious number that says, This is the King's Game. All members of your class will participate. You have 24 hours to carry them out. The games have only just begun. <laughs> and if you don't want your brown-haired friend getting you caught up in a King's Game, then subscribe for Dear Life, like and comment, let us know what you liked and of course didn't like, but be nice about it, and check out a How To Be playlist down below.